tried plowing this morning and it was oh, almost impossible. It drove me nuts. I'm so frustrated. I, I don't know how we're going to do it tomorrow. With both of us using the plow, it still wouldn't really work. But we're just hoping for a vegetable garden now. I can't imagine doing acres of crops. It would be crazy. I think it would take as much to prepare because we, we should disc the soil, but we don't even have anything to disc it with. I'll back them up straight. Back up. Day three. Frank and Alana Logie begin breaking the land. They have no choice. It's the first week of June. If they're going to have food for the winter, they need to plow and plant right away. Alan Webb, a neighbor, is here to give them a short course on sod busting because Frank and Alana have no experience with draft horses. The other thing is, too, don't stand between the uh, horse and anything that you've got hooked to it. <laughs> don't stick your fingers through the chain links either unless you want to have nine. It wasn't supposed to be this way. There was another couple here. They had more farming experience, but they had to quit on the first day. For now, Frank and Alana face life as prairie oh. pioneers alone. This is pretty risque for the Victorian period, isn't it? <laughs> This is Frank and Alana's dream, to live the pioneer life of the 1870s. Here's your furrow Look at shot baby. here. Look at this nice straight 14-inch furrow here. They got five, they got five good feet here, so that's a start. Slow down. Easy. Whoa. Whoa. As soon as I let off it, it popped back out. Yeah, you have okay. to keep pushing the whole time. I don't know if it's, it would be better if we had someone that's strong back here. The land teaches a hard lesson here. Raw courage just isn't enough. Plowing 1870s style Easy. takes skill and brute strength. Easy, whoa, easy. Whoa. I don't think I'm strong enough. <laughs> no, my ankle's gonna get broken. Okay. All right. Duke and Diamond, go. <laughs> Duke and Diamond, go. Go, Duke Come and on. Diamond. Go, Duke and Diamond. Keep them to the right. Huh? They switch places, but Duke and Diamond won't listen to Alana. Plowing is a disappointment. Go, easy. Don't keep stopping. Are we going to try plowing again later? What do you want to do? Not today. I'm plowing tomorrow. My ankle's too sore. It feels like all day we're fidgeting with the animals and we can't get anything done. Because we don't have a field to put them in or anything. So we have to feed them and water them. They can't do anything to keep them tied all the time. I said right now I'd like to kill all the animals. <laughs> we spend two hours before bed just preparing the animals and then an hour and a half when you get up preparing the animals. So if, so we, if we chose to get rid of the animals... If we got rid of them, we could probably do a lot more stuff. Yeah, but... It's recording, hun. Okay. We had the uh, horse get its foot caught in its halter because it's been tied up too long and it nearly broke its leg. So now the horse is running loose. So what we're having to do is we have this big well. We're afraid it's going to get fall in here tonight. I can't drive them into the ground, so... We have it all covered with wood, and hopefully the horse won't step in it tonight. I'd have to try to uh, dig fence posts. We'd be here for the next two hours, and it's already probably 11 o'clock. We're going to be up in five hours, six hours, so that's going to be it for tonight. I think we'll just leave it, and uh, hopefully the horse doesn't fall in and kill itself tonight. been a long night for Frank and Alana, and the trouble with the horses is just the beginning. He bucked a bunch of times and ended up going straight down, and his head was smashed against the tree. It was caught with his foot in between the tree. So I, I cut the collar off him, and I cut the rope. And uh, it took him a while to get up, and he was limping like really badly. How about you guys? I don't know. We're both sick. We're both throwing up. We both have diarrhea. 
can't eat. We made breakfast today. We ate like two mouthfuls. Both threw up and chucked the breakfast. Elena slept maybe three hours, but she's really sick. She's sicker than I am. Maybe if yeah. we could hire someone for a day. Just to take Just care of the animals. animals. Because we haven't even milked her yet, because we're both feeling so sick this morning. We thought, oh, seeing that milk come out is just going to be... And the cow just isn't... Keeps moving. The cow isn't... I don't know. It's, we think the cow might be getting sick, too, which we're worried well, it might be in her water. Do you know? Well, we don't know, because she, she's just not herself. What I need to know is how sick you are and how close we are to the point at which we'd have to get a doctor or take you out. If I don't think so no, now. Think can... This morning I would have said, yeah, definitely. But no, I'm starting to feel better. I think if we, we just need to rest. I don't have the energy. The thing is, we, we, we spend so much time trying to get the other stuff done. The last people we try to think about is ourselves because we have no time. You know, the well, everyone keeps saying it's going to get harder, got to get going, got to get going. The chickens are going to die sitting in their coops. They're not. We haven't got one <laughs> egg yet out of them. Any, any tears? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this morning I was like, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. We got problems. They're both really sick. They were up throwing up all night. They've the crew is worrying. It's obvious the Logies are overwhelmed by the needs of the animals and struggling to cope with the shock of being dropped into pioneer life. Obviously, it's created stress for them, and the reality of their situation as settlers is hitting them. Uh, and they may not have anticipated these things, but that's the reality, and that's part of the story, certainly. Am I getting a little sick? Well, no. We were sick. We, we feel yeah. a little better. We're not throwing up anymore, so... I'm worried about you both being sick, and maybe the sun is partly to do with that, too, you know? It's probably sun. We, we work too hard. We're a little bit tired. Yeah, everything's probably... a little dirty. And the diet, the yeah. diet is... Yeah, and everything's probably a little dirty. We're eating out of it in our hands. And... But the reality is that that is your predicament as homesteaders and settlers. Mm -hmm. And finding solutions to these uh, problems is, is, I can't help you with that because I don't have the answers. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we chose the two of you because we felt that you would make decisions that would, you know, you could resolve these problems. Yeah. And, uh, and so the decisions that you make are yours. Mm -hmm. We know that they're a strong couple. We know that they, we've seen what happened two days ago, how they managed to get through that in spite of everything falling apart around them. And uh, the only thing I am worried about is them being sick. What about the animals? What do you want to do? The animals? I think the animals are okay. I, just, I think they were just worried about them and uh, they're not used to them. You know? yeah. He's right, I guess, but doesn't seem like he's being overly supportive. I don't know what he could do, maybe just, maybe I'm just too tired. I also think too, that not, we, we, you can't prepare yourself for how hard it is doing this. As hard as we thought it would be, it's way harder. I think of any job I've ever done, how dirty or stinky or hard it was, this is always harder though. This is harder than any normal job you could possibly have. You have a normal job, you just go home at nights. Where you can't go home, this is your home. So, you know, the ticks you have crawling up your underwear all day is the same ticks you're gonna have in bed with you at night, so <laughs> they're still getting away from them or any of this stuff. We had a dead mouse swimming here this morning. <laughs> the Logies aren't quitters, so the only thing to do is get back to work. Meanwhile, another pioneer couple is preparing to move in and help them out. For now, Frank decides to build a chicken coop. But that means taking apart all the chicken crates. And the chickens are in no mood to sit still.
Well, never a dull moment as a settler. Just as we're going to bed, we thought everything was wonderful. All the chickens started escaping. So we found that all our chickens can jump like 10 feet in the air. So now we have wood st st nailed all the way up the sides, and hopefully that'll hold them in. It's, it drives us nuts. Every time we're going to go to bed, some friggin' animal goes crazy. Hopefully tomorrow we can try and fix this chicken coop. It's pouring rain again. We have to get up early and try to make it into town to meet everyone at uh, in town to go and pick up more supplies and bring the other couple out. So I don't know if we're going to be able to get the wagon out of here in the morning. If it keeps raining, it's going to be too muddy. I don't know what we're going to do. We know they're gonna be all excited right now. Where's we go? Oh, you suckers! <laughs> you have no idea. She's got her bonnet on and everything. I hope they had a good breakfast. <laughs> How, How are you, are you guys? Oh, oh, good, good to see you. We're <laughs> stinky. Don't hug us. <laughs> Day seven. The other couple arrives to complete the homesteading team. Tim and Deanna Treadway remember Frank and Alana from the meetings with all the settler finalists. Wow, I have been so excited um, when um, when you guys called me up, or I was the only one home, I think I said the word really for five minutes. <laughs> really? <laughs> I've been excited. Deanna's scared. There's so Ask much, me. there are many things to look forward to that I'm really, that I am looking forward to. I know it's going to be an awfully hard job. I'm the realist. He's a visionary. Oh, yeah. See a um, civilization? Yeah, we've been sitting on just like... All right, go to the diamonds. The Treadways are from Kenora, Ontario. They have some farming skills, and Tim's a house builder and keen on hunting and trapping. Deanna works in a dental office, and she's a great gardener. They've traveled the world doing missionary work, and they share a love of the wilderness, enough to leave a half-million-dollar house behind and three sons. The youngest boy is just 15, He'll stay with friends while his parents live their pioneer dream. the broom all out and uh, swept all up here. <laughs> wow, looking good. You guys have done a pile of work already. Wow, <laughs> we're really close together here, aren't we? <laughs> oh, this will be a good test. <laughs> oh, if my boys could see this. <laughs> this is fantastic here. Beautiful spot, quiet. Except for the cow, get some milk out of it. <laughs> it's not what I imagined at all. I imagine? thought the prairie. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't imagine us all hemmed in like this by trees. Yeah. yeah like this is bush. <laughs> yeah. Will it be okay? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, once we get organized. Once we get organized. Well, got a lot of work ahead of us. A little bit of rain now. Yeah. That's just to cool us off. <laughs> well, what should we do? Should we start cleaning? Why don't we clean up all this brush? Is this what you've done? You've Like you've cut these uh, trees here all the time? Is that what this is? Well, I'm not worried about this brush. I don't, you want to clean this? Or what should we do? I, I guess we're going to wait for those guys, but we're waiting for those guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, where's that other horse? Oh, she's okay. Can't be too organized out here in the bush. I think, you know, I think it's going to be really hard for her to see it disorganized because she said we got to get this cleaned up right away. And I'm usually a neat freak at home, but I mean, you just, you can't. And like, I'm not going to pick bushes out of the way because they're just there. You know, like, so it's going to be little things that are just adjusting. Deanna wants an outdoor kitchen complete with shelves, a stove, and a place to stow all the cooking supplies. Um, how long would it take you to make a couple of these shelves? I, I really want to get going on that corral. We have to get it done by tomorrow morning. You tell me. No, I just was saying that I thought this was a good area. But you well, it's it. good. A U shape is good because then yeah. you one roof you don't have, a lot yeah, of Yeah, right. That's right. 
How come a kitchen first, Tim? Hmm? How come a kitchen first, Michelle? You keep the women happy, you got the men happy. <laughs> Haven't you heard that saying? If mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Make sense? Frank's out in the back there and he's marking where the corral's gonna be. So when I get this done here, we'll run the corral thing and we'll probably have the kitchen set up, the corral set up, the horses and the cows will be happy today. The ladies will be happy. And I'll tell you, when the kitchen gets set up, I'll be happy. <laughs> Seems like Tim's a take charge guy. How are you feeling about that? Honest. Honest? Honest? We'll be out of here in a month, so Deanna won't. Deanna's got her doilies and she's worried about her kitchen being perfect and everything perfect. And if we, if we live like that out here, we'll never get a thing done. To me, this corral has to get done by night. If the women don't have shelves for the next four hours, to me, who cares? But he wants to make them happy. So that's what he wants to do. I'll go haul the 100-pound thing of barbed wire through the fence myself, through the bush. So. in the bush were doing work. <laughs> we heard a lot of giggling back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, the fence got done on itself. We were busy oh, doing other stuff. <laughs> there is an old saying from settler times that many hands make light work. And in the doing, there is the making of a pioneer life together. Who says we need a boy scout? <laughs> I wonder if it would help. Give her milk before Dan? No, never. This is my first. <laughs> I was doing better before you came. <laughs> Stage fright. Oi! Come on, baby! <laughs> Whoa! I'm not too good at the shot. She's got little tits. Ah. Yeah. I know, I hear her teeth. Yeah, that's it. Actually, her back right one is just terrible. Yeah, that back one yeah. just sucks. Oh. Well, I'm glad that you're the, the milker. <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> you're good at it. Look at you. Well, yeah, you, but you know what? Five times ago, she did. You get out of here. <laughs> you can go home with all kinds of nifty things. <laughs> <laughs> On my resume, I can milk a cow. Yeah, she's just giving her. It's almost the end of your first day. Any thoughts? Well, we're starting to get organized. I realize we're going to just have to take this one day at a time, yeah. not think about the whole year, just one day at a time. It's recording. Hey, anyway. You're on camera now. Well, this is our first first day. And uh, <laughs> I love it. I'm really enjoying it. How is your, uh, let's see, how is your reaction, uh, how is your feelings about being with Frank and Alana? <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. Thank you, thank you. Looking forward to a good, quiet sleep tonight. There's beautiful um, fireflies out all over outside. And there's a gentle breeze. There was a few mosquitoes, such as this one. And, um, but our tent is dry. And um, our spirits are high. Our spirits are high. <laughs> We're ready to sleep and have sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Farewell for now. Now, Winnipeg City, the Red River White Shell region today. Periods of rain, further rainfall amounts up to 10 millimeters. Wind northeast 30, gusting to 50 kilometers an hour. The high today, 12 degrees. Tonight, cloudy skies, even showers. We're pretty happy with it. Had the fire going this morning and had some 
had some tea. Brought the tea to the gals who were sleeping still. <clears throat> we moved the wood stove inside because we needed to dry clothes. There's a saying, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. So they gotta get the women happy first. Is Alana happy? Alana's beaming. <laughs> <laughs> What did you say you were? And beaming. Beaming. That night of passion that did it for you. <laughs> beaming, renewed vigor. The only jar with a lid. Our only one. And you broke it. And I broke it. That's it. You don't get to sleep in the tent tonight. You don't get to use your doilies for a year now. <laughs> And this we use for our legs. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention our underarms. <laughs> oh. oh, you women. If only you knew what it's like. Oh. The day began with plans to plow and work on the well. But Mother Nature has a different idea. And the settlers turn to other urgent matters. Well, this is going to be our toilet. Sort of a, a reach-over toilet. Frankie started to get stomach pain, so uh, I, I've been here uh, seven days now. I've gone to the washroom once, so uh, I, I, th I think what I need is some relaxing time. So uh, I think you know, come out here, bring a book or something, and just uh, you know, sit here and get waterlogged. Yeah. Well, this is the, uh, the the cleaning water, warm right now. I have to go quickly, so I'll have a that could be too much of a shock for myself. This is our, our rag with my uh, initials. Uh, put my initial F put in there, so. It, uh, no one gets confused using the wrong one. Here I thought I was really ready for this, uh, but it's a different story out here. How about Tim? Oh, he's loving it. <laughs> he's just having a ball. He's in his element. This was his idea. This was his adventure. But uh, I've often found out uh, he's had he's had ideas of adventures many, many times, and I've. Uh, not been the one that has been enthusiastic about it. Um, sometimes I've squelched some of his dreams, and this time I didn't want to. It's one thing to have pioneer dreams, but this is the real thing. Go, Duke and Diamond. It's now the middle of June, and the settlers are running out of growing days. There's an urgent need to begin planting a crop in a garden. So Frank and Tim try plowing in the rain. Well, we got a good river hey. going on this road anyway. We got the Red River, Ludway. <laughs> it's very strange. Are we giving the horses or Tim or us here? Is the... Watch out for when you start out. Uh, yeah, I'll let him just go ahead. On a single tree there. Well, I got the heart beating, I'll tell you. Yeah. Whoa. That was good. We just hit a rock back there. Well, I'm fairly pleased there. They're beginning to get the hang of it a little bit. Um, don't think too many plowing contests would be won. But on the other hand, um, they are going to get enough stirred up there that they can clean out the side in between with a shovel and throw it off to the side and they should get their bedding plants in today. Just wish it wasn't quite so wet. And it's not too late. There are people still reseeding potholes. There are still people that are planting garden. But it would have been better if it was about two weeks ago. So if they're going to have any, any uh, crops growing well in the fall, we're going to need a nice benign fall without any frost. That's quite an art. I, I never got it. I'm, I mean, we were all over the place. Great boy, oh, we'll yeah, be healthy. I'm sore now. Oh, here. Oh, great. Thank you, Lord, for this food and for the safety that you gave us in, uh, this morning. I just pray for strength now and enjoyment throughout this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Oop. There's the moon. Evening. Well, we're sitting in the wagon, horse wagon. And the moon's in the background, as you can see, and we're looking at our little kitchen. How have you felt today about cooking, Deanna? Oh, man. Made a nice 
soup this morning. Took about four hours to cook, but it was good. But it was good. Uh, very, very tasty. A lot of work. You feel discouraged at all? Yes. Yeah, this ain't easy life. Boy, I've been thinking about these settlers so much today. What a hard life it was for them. You see those mosquitoes. Yeah, wow. there's lots of them. Lots, wow, of, lots of mosquitoes. huge. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh, time for bed. Oh, major time We've for We've been bed. up since 5 o'clock. Yeah, since 5 o'clock. What and, is it now, uh, about 9.30? I don't know, probably a little later. But uh, we've been putting in about 18-hour days, something like that. And <coughs> <coughs> feeling good. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Good night. Good night for now. It will be a June remembered as one of the wettest in a hundred years. Crops and gardens all across southern Manitoba drown and rot. But in this hidden field, there's no turning back. Go to Go! Seeds and plants will go straight into these rough furrows just to get things growing. In spite of the weather, there's a renewed confidence in the work and the optimism of true pioneers who have to believe that things are going to get better. Extra dry, eh? <laughs> what, when you guys are doing this, what are you thinking about what it was like for those homesteaders 130 yeah, years ago? I am. I'm, I'm really thinking about that. It must have been just terribly hard. Just terribly hard. Of course, you know, I mean, where we're coming from has also got a big thing to do with it, you know? I think a lot of us are like you're relying on the weather all the time. I mean, we thought we'd have this done five days ago, and there's just nothing you can do. You know, a lot of it you're just relying on what's happening around you and what kind of comes up that you have to look after first. We have a pig coming, we've got to build a pig pen, you know? It's not stuff you think of. You just thought you'd plan to do it Tuesday and you do it Tuesday. Is there any satisfaction in at least getting this far, though? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, there is. A lot. That maybe we'll have potatoes. I think we will. How are you guys getting along, or do you feel like a team building, or how's it going? Honest. Good. I feel a bit like she's my mom and I want to be more partners, but other than that, it's going good. She's great. She's just great. I wondered if that would happen, you know? Yeah. Never had a daughter, you know? Got three boys, I've never had a daughter. Okay, here's the shot of my hands. They've got, there's the burn from the stove there. This is from when the horses took off on me and kind of pulled the skin off, so it's kind of a rope burn. This is just all from chopping up things and peeling potatoes with a knife instead of a peeler. That's just where an old sliver was. And they're kind of orange from the leather gloves. And I have no nails, I used to. These are actually clean, I just clean them with a knife. So it's getting to be quite a difference in our hands. And they're gonna be muscular soon for all that milking. Oh, I can't believe this. I can't believe I'm living like this. Try to get these clean. Um, well, we have no nail brushes or any nail files. In fact, I'm using the file, or the sharpening stone, to file my nails down. And, uh, but, that's the way it is out here, on the homestead. What's for dinner? We have garlic and pork here. And then carrots. I should probably stir them. And Deanna's actually just making butter right now, so we can at least have carrots with butter. You'll notice they're really black. It's just from this pan, I mean, 
it will kind of taste like whatever was in it yesterday and it gets the coloring so that's why it's so dark we both dread our kitchen day today was mine and last night i was saying oh great it's kitchen day tomorrow yeah. and tonight i'll feel good when it's done i don't dread it yet i do yeah she's not a traditional wife like i am <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad because Frank's not in the kitchen helping me. <laughs> and Jim would never be in the kitchen helping me. I've only realized the last day or two how much it's bugging me, though. Yeah. That I'm stuck in here doing the women's stuff. Yeah, see, and that doesn't bother me. It's really me. bugging me. That doesn't bother me because... Today it was laundry all morning and then cooking all afternoon and then airing out the tent. So in some ways the traditional women's role was just a given. It just had to be. Yeah, because I want to get out of this traditional thing desperately, but I kind of can't. <laughs> I mean, there's no choice. Why like, couldn't you, though? Because I don't have the strength, which is bothering me, so i got to start lifting rocks in the evening. I mean, if I was out there, I can go out and help, but I can't physically do what Tim and Frank are doing. And I'd love to say to Frank, it's your turn to cook, I'm going to go uh, chip away at that log, but I can't. I can't even get a mark in it. Well, oh yeah, that's a meal fit for a king. And the biscuits are wonderful. They make amazing biscuits. Deanna makes amazing biscuits. They got fleas. <laughs> and milk and daisy. <laughs> right now what you can't see is Tim's behind the camera getting undressed and picking the fleas and different bugs off his body. <laughs> and we're all just watching. We're pretending to look at this video. <laughs> well, I guess we had a good day today. We got all the potatoes planted. How many rows? <coughs> a total of, um, five, two, well, five seven, very long rows. Seven. seven how much? <coughs> 75 pounds seven. in a day? Seven rows. 150 pounds? Yeah, seven rows of potatoes. We did some more masterful plowing today. We're getting better at that. The horses are responding better. Responding. Now that we shot one. <laughs> <laughs> and just a sec, Deanna and I had a very successful day oh, making yet another God soup, six. cleaning more dishes. And mending some more. You really uh, tie that more. up well. I can see inside. Look at it. He's even interrupting. <laughs> stinky. And we did some more dishes. So that, that was our dishes. exciting day. A woman's work is never done. My wife graciously washed my hair. And uh, as you can tell, it's uh, silky smooth. <laughs> you can shape it almost to anything you want. You want? <laughs> they this, didn't need gel back then. It was sort of natural. This is this is for strong days to keep me in line as I'm going down the fields. <laughs> this one here. This is for on sunny days. <laughs> the shade. There, for shade. <laughs> We're all feeling really proud about this place. All of us. Us too. And. Um, <laughs> It's getting nice and clean around here. It's drying up a little bit. And tomorrow we're going to start planting the vegetables and making it look like a real good garden. <laughs> it's raining again. The pioneers have been dreading this day. Today, they take delivery of Annabelle. She's 450 pounds and pregnant. They hope her piglets will become hearty meals on the cold winter nights to come. As for Duke and Diamond, it's hate at first sight. Diamond, go. Go, go. Just let him stand. Go, down. Let him calm down and stop blowing. The pioneers are still learning how to handle the horses. Duke and Diamond look like they're going to bolt. And then suddenly, the worst happens. A runaway. So that wasn't a bad runaway. Would have been a lot more exciting with the wooden wheeled wagon, for example, because then they would have been in the ditch at the other end of the road. But um, they're learning a lot, and of course the School of Hard Knocks is the best way for the pioneers to pick up the knowledge that uh, the real pioneers would have learned from the time they were small. So they're lucky. They didn't break anything. They got the horses stopped. They drove away with them without any trouble, and we'll catch up with them at the gate, and I think they'll be going just fine. Eventually, I think they stopped just because they were too tired. What about the pig? 
I didn't care about the pig. What were you thinking, Tim, when that horse took off? I was thinking that lucky guy. <laughs> was telling me this morning he's into racing uh, dog sleds. And uh, so I thought this is just a unique opportunity for him to try it out with a horse and pig team. Thank you, Lord, for this good food. And thank you for the safety of bringing this pig back and the uh, danger of the runaway. I just thank you that Frank was able to get them stopped. And uh, we just thank you now for the health and strength that you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Those horses are going to hurt somebody yet. Glad we don't make our house out of oak. Oh. Wow, we've only done four. The common comforts of the outside world are a fading memory, replaced by a routine of hard labor. But the settlers take time to share a few simple pleasures. Well, Tim just brought it, brought it to me, my afternoon gift. <laughs> Why do you think he did that? Oh, to cheer me up. How's the weather been? Oh, absolutely the worst conditions any settler could <laughs> ever, ever have. It's been cold, windy, Rain, rain, rain. It poured all night last night. Every time I woke up, anyhow, every time you woke up, it was raining. Just sopping wet. We're just sopping wet. In fact, our, our garden, if you're going to take a look at our garden, it's all the rows that we've planted is just filled with water. Frank and I have been here 15 days, and we've had three days of sun, and the rest has been rainy and pretty much pouring on and off the entire time. How about staying clean? We, we don't bother anymore. <laughs> I mean, we just can't. And it's funny how every day you start to care less and less. You wash your armpits at night and you just, you know, you don't care about the mud. We have marks on our legs every night where our socks ended and you scrub it off if you can and if not, you just want to go to bed. Remember, remember you reading about the stories about how they'd have a bath once a week, eh? And you thought, thought oh, gross. how gross, you know, to have a bath once a week. But boy, now I can see why. Just the effort of having a bath out here is just incredible. It just seems incredible. stupid. Well, if you look at our stove, We've just got one kettle to heat up water with. Well, you can't have much of a bath with that one kettle of hot water. I'd love to have a good bath, but it's a waste of time, really. Everything has gone moldy. These big blue marks. marks. I left them on the floor for a day, and they're moldy. Oh, All our meat's gross. gone moldy. Everything's moldy. We figure our wool blankets are moldy. We've got these gunny sacks behind us as a headrest. We aired them all yesterday. They're now soaked again, which means all the clothes in there are going to get moldy, too. But I'm really tired of the rain. But the well is up. <laughs> Some good parts about it. But, uh... Oh, another wood tick. Ooh. Good night. Good night. We're ready to go to bed. Yep. Tim, Very did good. you ever get the frogs out of the well? Frogs are still in the well. <laughs> are they dead? They must be. No. Haven't seen I think they're I still living. They good night. Any sign of those carrots? Not here. And uh, we planted our furrows here full of a whole potato sack full of uh, seed potatoes. And of course, we got more rain and more rain and more rain. And we dug this up yesterday, and uh, they're all rotten just because of the rain. So we're going to have to redo, replant them all. It's getting late, it's almost July 1st, and so it's pretty late. But we'll do what we can and try what we can get out of it. Now for those of you who love the movie Babe, I don't know what you think about this pig, but I already got a hate relationship with it. The pioneers have all their animals now, but no place to keep them for the winter. The next challenge is putting up a log barn. It's good practice for the houses they'll soon be building. They have only a few simple tools and a sense of humor to get things done. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh. Wait, I gotta get out of here. Okay, no back. Okay. Oh. They came here girls and they'll leave women. <laughs> came here girls and we'll leave men. But you know, I was saying, most women, 48 years old, back then in the 1870s, half of them were dead already. 
And here I am, 48 years old. Out Hoping here. to die. <laughs> Wishing I was dead. <laughs> we're going to need a barn later. So what we're going to do is build a barn-sized pig pen, but the walls are only going to be three feet high. It's going to be all log. It's a lot of work, but everything's going good. Alana, I don't know if you can see Alana's back there. She's, she's sleeping away. She worked so hard today. I have to say, Alana is, is as tough as any guy I know out here. She goes in the bush and hauls out logs as big as I can carry. We, hog out, we, we carry between us logs that weigh about 250 pounds up on our shoulder. And she's wearing this big long skirt and her feet go and get tangled on it and everything else. It's a lot harder, I think, for the women than it is for the guys. The guys get to do a lot of jobs that are a lot more fun. So we're going to try and, uh, we, we didn't feed it last night, we haven't fed it yet this morning, so we're going to try and tie some food over the pen. And then we're going to try to just slowly take him over there without getting him too excited. Saturday. One more board. How did I get, Piggy? We beat you. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I know why the Lord made ears on a pig big. <laughs> you can hang on when you have the pail. You just hang on to the ears and hang on to the pail. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> I don't know, I feel really good about a day like this. You know, I'm working for, it's like working for yourself. We reap all the rewards for everything we do. Um, and, and we see that, we see the difference. You know, if we work hard, we see a difference the next day. And I think that's one of the main differences out here compared to a real, a normal job where you're working for somebody else. Like, I'm a, I'm no right, so I fix a machine for someone it's fixed for them. I, like I get a paycheck, and that's it. We're out here. You get, you get something real. You get something that uh, I don't know, you could really grab a hold of. And it's a really good feeling. It's Sunday. The sun finally returns. The pioneers look back on their labors and resolve to keep every Sunday for rest and reflection as it would have been in decades gone. Give him something to drink. This will make him feel ashamed of himself and God will reward you. Marking Sunday, even with a homespun service, has become important, especially for the Treadways who are strong in their Christian faith, a faith Deanna will need in the weeks and months ahead if she's going to survive the other great challenge of a life on the land, isolation and loneliness. We've left behind three boys, of course, and uh, that's hard very hard. And when you don't bring me any news, it's even harder. <laughs> um, I try not to think about them. That's what I've tried to do, is just shut it out of my mind, that we're in a different world out here. There's, I mean, there's nothing that tugs at your heart more than your own kids, and it's been hard for me. And just not being able to pick up the phone, even talk. Or just have a hug. I mean, my boys are very, very huggy to me, and I just, I mean, I love them dearly, and, and I, I miss that. Next time on Pioneer Quest, more rain. The mosquitoes arrive. The pioneers make a great discovery. And Deanna reveals that she's had thoughts of leaving. Yes. Yes, I have. 
I have to be honest. I mean, not that I would go, but oh Lord, give me a reason to go. <laughs> Bye-bye, honey. Join us for Pioneer Quest, a year in the real West. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, I think you have to hold it straighter up and down. Can you tell me to try? No. I'm not letting you anywhere near my neck. Like crocodile dundee. <laughs> Give him the mirror, hun. <laughs> I have to be serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's okay. I'm doing a good enough job cutting myself. You notice the fact that nothing's happening there? Yeah, that's a good sign. You don't have anything spurting. If there's a barber uh, watching this, can you please uh, call in, email us, and tell us how to do this properly? Otherwise, the rest of you call 911. <laughs>